before we move to our next topic let us have quick revision of whatever we have studied last time now we have seen about the electric charge that there are two types of charge a positive charge and a negative charge and we have seen that the like charges they repel each other while unlike charges they attract each other also we have seen about the electroscope and how can we detect if any charge is present on the object so this is an instrument by which we can detect a charge on a substance or an object we have also studied about the conductors and insulators conductors are those which allow the electrons to flow that means this type of material already has free electrons which can move in a material while insulators are those which do not have any free electrons now students there are three methods by which we can charge the object or a body one of them is charging by friction in this method two objects they are rubbed with each other in this case a glass rod is rubbed with a silk cloth so what happens here electrons from the glass rod they are moved to the silk cloth as a result glass rod becomes positively charged while by gaining the electrons silk cloth becomes negatively charged similarly a plastic rod when it is rubbed with a fur fur means a hairy surface so what happens in this case the plastic rod becomes negatively charged that means plastic rod gains electron while that hairy surface which loses the electrons becomes positively charged so in this way by friction method we can charge a body or an object so it is clear that the body which loses electrons becomes positively charged while the body which gains electron becomes negatively charged charged particles are both protons as well as electrons but protons they are bound in a nucleus so they cannot move while electrons they are free to move hence whenever there is a transfer of charged particle it is the electron which can move second method of charging is charging by contact in this method if a charged body is made in a direct physical contact with an uncharged particle or a uncharged body then even that body gets charged here an example is given of a plastic rod which was already charged and a pith ball which is chargeless when a plastic rod is touched with a pith ball some of the charge from a plastic rod will move to the pith ball and so in this way pith ball also becomes charged remember that here the charge lost by the plastic rod is equal to the charge gained by the pith ball 
so in this way we can charge a uh, uncharged board now our next method of charging is charging by induction now students in previous method of friction we have seen that when the two bodies are rubbed with each other both the bodies gets charged one becomes negative charged and the other becomes equally positively charged also we have seen that in the method of contact when a charged body is made in contact with a neutral body the charge lost by the charged body is equal to the charge gained by the neutral body in this way that neutral body gets charged now in the method of charging by induction as shown in figure there are two metallic spheres they are resting on a non conducting stand these two spheres are neutral means there are equal number of positive as well as negative charge in next figure figure b we can see that when a positively charged rod is brought near to the sphere on the left hand side the electrons which are negatively charged get attracted toward this positively charged rod so that this surface of the sphere becomes negatively charged while we can imagine the equal number of positive charge they gets deposited on the surface of a right hand side sphere due to repulsion we know that negative and positive they will attract each other while positive and positive means like charge they will repel each other so in this way the surfaces of the spheres gets charged one negative and the other positive remember that still the net charge on both the spheres is zero because there are equal number of negative and positive charge as a whole now as shown in figure c when these two spheres get separated from each other individually now there is a negative charge on the left hand side figure while there is a positive charge on the right hand side still this rod is near to the spheres hence we can say that the charges on the spheres are induced now in last figure figure d when this rod which was positively charged is now removed here still both the spheres acquired this negative and positive charges so this is called induction of charge and hence now both the spheres are individually charged one is negatively charged on the left hand side and the other is positively charged on the right hand side so now students we have seen process of charging by induction now here is example number 1 a 
also shows the another method of charging by induction here also this method is about the charging by induction now in this method you can see a single sphere is shown which is resting on a non conducting stand when a negatively charged rod is brought near to this sphere a positive charge gets deposited on this left hand side surface due to attraction while negative charge electrons due to repulsion they will move towards this right hand side surface and as this surface is connected with a conducting wire to the ground that electrons will move towards towards the ground now in next figure the wire grounding wire is removed and hence now this sphere is remaining with the positive charge after that even this rod is moved away and hence the sphere which is having a positive charge towards its left hand side surface will gets redistributed over the whole spherical surface so this is also the method of induction only now our next topic is about basic properties of electric charges here the definition of point charge is given when can we consider the two charge bodies as a point charges so definition says that if the size of the charged bodies are very small compared to the distance between them we treat them as a point charge means the separation between the charge bodies must be large compared to their sizes in that case we can consider both the bodies as a point charge bodies now conservation of charge when can we say that the charge is conserved here it is given that there is an isolated system now what is the meaning of isolated system the isolated system is one in which the charges cannot enter in the system as well as the charges from the system that cannot be escaped such systems are considered as an isolated system now let us consider such an isolated system in this type of isolated system the new charge particles can be created even the charge particles they may get destroyed now when i say new charge particles gets created means a neutral body can be divided into a positive charge and a negative charge while when i say the charge particle can be destroyed means one negative charge particle and the other positive charge particle combined to form a neutral particle so now students we can say that in an isolated system it is not possible to create or destroy net charge of the system but definitely the number of charge particles may be created or may be destroyed let us see one example consider this system having three negative charge and four positive charge so here the total number of charge particles are three and four that is seven total number of charge particle are seven but the net charge is 
वन वन मीन्स प्लस वन प्लस फोर एंड माइनस थ्री सो प्लस वन इज द नेट चार्ज ऑफ द सिस्टम नाउ कंसिडर द देर इज सम प्रोसेस इन अ सिस्टम इन विच वन पॉजिटिव एंड वन नेगेटिव चार्ज कंबाइन विथ ईच अदर एंड बिकम्स अ न्यूट्रल पार्टिकल सो नाउ इन दिस केस हियर देर आर टू नेगेटिव चार्ज पार्टिकल्स नाउ एंड थ्री पॉजिटिव चार्ज पार्टिकल्स रिमेन अगेन टोटल चार्ज ऑफ द सिस्टम इज प्लस थ्री एंड माइनस टू सो दैट इज इक्वल टू प्लस वन विच वॉज अर्लियर बट नाउ द नंबर ऑफ चार्ज पार्टिकल्स आर टू एंड थ्री मीन्स फाइव सो हियर डेफिनेटली द नेट चार्ज विल रिमेन सेम बिफोर एंड आफ्टर द प्रोसेस बट द टोटल नंबर ऑफ चार्ज पार्टिकल्स दे मे change earlier it was 7 and now it was 5 now next is quantization of charge the fact of quantization of charge is experimentally established means it is experimentally verified it says that the total charge q on any body is always an integer multiple of e here you can see this n is an integer number and e is a fundamental or basic unit of charge charge of an electron or charge of a proton is always same in magnitude but the electron charge is considered negative while charge of a proton is considered positive so here e does not mean it is an electron it is a unit of a charge so total charge is always n into e now the fact of quantization of charge was experimentally demonstrated by millikan and it was found that the value of 1e is equal to 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb coulomb is si unit of charge while e is a fundamental unit this much charge is carried by an electron or a proton as i said earlier if it is an electron then this value of charge on an electron will be negative and if it is a proton then its value will be positive now one coulomb charge means if one ampere current is flowing through a conductor then in one second this much charge moves out now definition of one coulomb now one coulomb charge is the charge that flows through a wire in one second if the current in a conductor or a wire is 1 ampere here remember that one coulomb is a very large amount of charge and so we use the smaller units like micro coulomb or milli coulomb micro means 10 days to minus 6 and milli means 10 days to minus 3 so these are the smaller units for a charge 